Many people see Evolution's time in WWE as a dark period in wrestling's history, with the main reason being that from 2002 to 2005, Triple H was pretty much an all-dominating heel, destroying all the competition and easily getting revenge on those who did eventually beat him. We sometimes tend to forget that Evolution had more purpose than just protecting Triple H, and that other purpose was to push Randy Orton and Dave Bautista into the main event. Without Evolution, who knows where both these men would be right now, but we can't deny that both Orton and Batista have had incredible success after Evolution broke up. So in this video we'll take a look at the story of Evolution in the WWE. In late 2002, 16 time world champion Ric Flair began managing then world champion Triple H and accompanying him to the ring. Their professional relationship began at Unforgiven 2002 when Flair helped Hunter defeat Rob Van Dam. Personally though, Triple H and Flair were good friends. Hunter grew up as a Ric Flair fan and the two became close when Flair jumped over to the WWF after the WCW buyout. Shortly after Flair began managing Hunter, Dave Batista would also get help from the Nature Boy. Batista had been working on Smackdown as Deacon Batista, which was going nowhere fast. When Dave made the jump to Raw, Rick took a liking to him, and while also bringing Triple H to the ring for his matches, he also found time to manage Batista. To get it out of the way, Batista wasn't supposed to be a member of Evolution. Mark Jindrak was originally going to be the muscle of the group, but Batista would step into that role instead. Mark tweeted, I wasn't ready for Evolution at that time in my career. I was immature and Batista fit better. It was mine to lose and I dropped the ball. Early footage of Evolution's eventual Titantron video shows Mark walking along with other Evolution members. The eventual video footage used was obviously edited to cut Jin Drag out. Makes you wonder though how Mark's career might have turned out if he was a part of Evolution as originally planned. So at this point, Triple H and Batista are both being accompanied to the ring by Flair, but both guys are still kept separate. Along with Batista, Randy Orton was also drafted to Raw, but the third generation star would suffer a shoulder injury that kept him off the shelf for close to five months. During this period, Randy Orton would keep himself relevant by giving us unwanted updates regarding his injury recovery during Raw broadcasts. World Champion Triple H was feuding with Scott Steiner at the beginning of 2003. Big Papa Pump returned to the WWE in late 2002 and was getting a shot at the main event when he was booked to face Hunter at the 2003 Royal Rumble. On the January 20th episode of Raw however, Scott Steiner was the victim of a beatdown courtesy of Triple H, Ric Flair, Randy Orton and Batista. Two weeks later, the group attacked Tommy Dreamer and Triple H officially named the group Evolution. Triple H spoke about how the four men were examples of pro wrestling's evolution, saying that Ric Flair represented the past, Triple H himself represented the present, and Orton and Batista represented the future of wrestling. He added that people shouldn't deny evolution, as it was a fact of life. The heel group was now officially formed. Evolution would come to the ring for promos dressed in expensive suits while their new theme music from Motorhead blurred out in the arena. The gimmick took a lot of inspiration from Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen, giving off the impression that their combined success allowed them to afford the finer things in life. Their Titantron video showed Evolution travelling in helicopters and limousines while magazine covers showed them standing beside expensive cars. Triple H has gone on record to say absolutely, Evolution was indeed heavily inspired by the Horsemen, so it's not like the group was trying to be anything else. Soon after the group had officially formed and got their name, Triple H must have rethought the Mark Jindrak and Dave Bautista situation for a brief moment as Dave Bautista would suffer an injury in training, resulting in the animal being out on the shelf for 8 months. The good news for Dave though was his spot would be held in the meantime and evolution would continue on while the big man was healing. 
Bad Blood 2003 was a successful night for Evolution. Ric Flair defeated Shawn Michaels with some help from Randy Orton and Triple H defeated Kevin Nash to retain his world championship. Orton was now beginning to develop his legend killer gimmick where he would demean the legends of wrestling's past and show that he was better than all of them, claiming he was the future of wrestling. On to SummerSlam in 2003 and this was another success for Evolution as Triple H successfully defended his world title in the Elimination Chamber. The story of the match was Goldberg gunning for the title and with some help from Ric Flair and Orton who also competed in the match, Triple H was able to not only defeat Goldberg but also give him a serious beatdown after the match. This led to a match at Unforgiven a month later where Goldberg would get another shot at Triple H. This time, if Goldberg lost, he would have to leave the WWF. Goldberg won and captured the world title, but it wasn't a total loss for Evolution as Randy Orton proved that he was indeed the legend killer when he defeated Shawn Michaels earlier in the night. I read that he had lost his championship to Goldberg on the September 29th episode of Raw, Triple H issued a $100,000 bounty to anybody who could take out Goldberg. Many tried and failed, but the returning Dave Batista would be the man who collected the bounty. The animal made his return by wrecking Goldberg's ankle with a steel chair. Unfortunately for Evolution though, this wasn't enough to stop Goldberg successfully defending his title against Triple H at the 2003 Survivor Series, even with Evolution interfering heavily during the match. While it may have seemed like bad times for Evolution, their most successful night was yet to come. The height of Evolution's dominance in WWE came at the 2003 Armageddon pay-per-view when the group won all the available gold on the Raw brand. Batista and Ric Flair captured the tag titles, Orton defeated Rob Van Dam to capture the IC title and Triple H finally defeated Goldberg to reclaim his World Heavyweight Championship. It seemed now that Evolution was unstoppable as they held all the titles in the air, claiming their spot as the most powerful group in the WWE. After an amazing last man standing match against Shawn Michaels at the Royal Rumble in 2004, Triple H would be defending his world title at WrestleMania 20 in a triple threat match against Chris Benoit and Shawn Michaels. Batista and Flair had dropped the tag titles but still, they and Randy Orton would be competing in a handicap match when they were booked to square off against The Rock and Mick Foley. While Evolution were victorious in the handicap match, Triple H lost the world title to Chris Benoit. Orton would be the only man marching into the next pay per view backlash holding a title and he was booked into a hardcore match with Mick Foley. This is one of my favourite matches ever as Randy Orton once again proved he was the legend killer after going through a violent and hard hitting match with Cactus Jack. Eventually it would be Edge who would defeat Randy Orton to end his 7 month intercontinental championship reign. Triple H befriended Eric Bischoff's kayfabe nephew Eugene and used him to his advantage quite a few times, all while laughing behind his back. During this period, Orton was also scheduled to face the World Heavyweight Champion at SummerSlam and Triple H had a chance to become the champion when he squared off against Benoit in an Ironman match on the July 26th, 2004 episode of Raw. This means that there could have been a potential Orton vs Triple H World Heavyweight title match at SummerSlam. Getting revenge for all the mean things that was done to him, Eugene cost Triple H the match against Benoit so it was confirmed that Orton and Benoit would be the main event at SummerSlam. Randy Orton ended up leaving SummerSlam as the new world champion, a title that his evolution leader Triple H had been obsessed with. The following night on Raw, Evolution threw Randy Orton a celebration party, only to reveal that they were not pleased with his championship victory. While Batista had Orton propped up on his shoulders, Triple H gave him a pleased thumbs up and then abruptly changed it to a thumbs down, which followed by Batista dropping Orton to the mat. Evolution then attacked Randy Orton, as whoever held the world championship was the enemy in the eyes of the game. 
So Randy Orton was now out of Evolution and Triple H was promised a title shot against the legend killer. At Unforgiven, Triple H beat Orton to regain the World Heavyweight Championship. During the following months, the WWE done all they could to make Orton a babyface, and while he did get some warm reactions from the crowd, the guy was still a natural heel at this time. Some audiences gave Orton the expected reaction while others would still boo him. Still, this didn't change the fact that Orton was out of evolution and also now didn't hold the world title. In the Elimination Chamber match at New Year's Revolution, Batista, Orton and Triple H were the last three remaining in the match. Seeds were being planted for Batista to turn on Evolution and become babyface, but it wouldn't happen on this night. Orton eliminated Batista with an RKO, leading to Triple H pinning Orton with Batista's help to win the title. Interestingly enough though, Triple H had the opportunity to save Batista from being eliminated, but instead he decided not to help. The Royal Rumble would be next and Triple H asked Batista not to enter the Royal Rumble match and instead assist him in defending the title against Orton at the same pay per view. Batista declined and instead went on to win the Royal Rumble match. Triple H defended his title successfully against Orton at the Rumble so now Dave had a decision to make. The Royal Rumble winner could choose whatever champion he wanted to face at WrestleMania and Dave had the option of going after JBL or Cena on Smackdown or his evolution leader Triple H on Raw. Triple H done all he could to sway Batista into jumping over to SmackDown and challenging the SmackDown champion, even going as far as to plot a feud between JBL and Batista. The game's devious tactics though proved unsuccessful, Batista chose to remain on Raw, powerbombing Triple H through a table and thus quitting Evolution. Batista became a major fan favourite as he walked into WrestleMania 21, defeating Triple H and becoming the new World Heavyweight Champion. Batista would successfully defend the title twice against Triple H in the months that followed, including inside the Hell in a Cell at Vengeance. Triple H would take some time away from the WWE after the Batista losses, but upon his return, Triple H would turn on Ric Flair, setting up some pay-per-view matches between Flair and Hunter, and thus, Evolution was no more. In the years that followed, Evolution would reform for special one-off appearances. When Batista made a return in 2014, things didn't go exactly as planned as the WWE audience rejected Batista in favour of Daniel Bryan. This led to ex-members of Evolution putting Daniel Bryan over at WrestleMania 30 as Daniel wrestled Triple H in the opening match and also was in a triple threat match later that night with Orton and Batista. Evolution would reform and take on The Shield in an entertaining six-man match on pay-per-view, which The Shield won. Also recently, an Evolution reunion led to Triple H and Batista squaring off at WrestleMania 35 this year, nearly 14 years after their last match together. If one of the goals of the Evolution concept was to bring Orton and Batista into the main event, then the mission was soundly accomplished. Orton went on to become a multi-time world champion and Batista also had an incredible WWE run that opened the doors to a career in Hollywood. While we may point to Evolution as another example of Triple H burying the competition, we should also take a step back and notice that two bona fide stars came out of the faction who pretty much came into the group with nothing going for them. Let's not forget that Ric Flair also had a great run with Evolution 2, showing why he was the nature boy once again with some entertaining matches and promos. Evolution certainly wasn't for everyone, and for sure, the team won a lot more than what they lost, but if you take the time to relive some of the shows of this era, there is entertainment to be found, from Triple H's matches with Shawn Michaels and Chris Benoit, to Orton vs Foley, to watching the group unravel and fight with each other. Evolution may not have pleased those who wanted to see the bad guys get their comeuppance, but hey, what's a dominating heel faction that never wins matches?